five. Can we uh, get it started? Yeah. All right. OK, I will just uh, share my slide. We will start with a small introduction about ProVentures as well as about the webinar. Let me share my screen. OK, so I hope uh, I hope the screen is visible. Yeah, hey, okay. all right. So. Thank you so much. Uh, I welcome all of you uh, from uh, who are joining from different places for this webinar. Uh, we titled this as uh, prompt engineering for a project professional. Uh, this is the next generation project management using Gen AI. So we all know this is the most uh, sensational and uh, widely spoken subject in the recent times. How AI is kind of used across all domains and uh, uh, you know towards all our work related activities. So we thought uh, we'll take this as an opportunity to introduce uh, how uh, you know the project professional should use Gen AI in their work activities and make it simpler and. Uh, with, with more uh, precision and uh, you can you can uh, have a well informed decision. So uh, this is going to be an exciting session. So we'll just introduce uh, ProVentures a bit. Uh, this is for the people who have uh, come for the first time. Uh, ProVentures is a 360 degree project management service provider. So we are into all the spectrum related to project management covering people, systems and solution. So we do process consulting. We have PMO services. We do product development, enterprise solution and as well as the corporate training. So we've been kind of doing this consulting and training for more than 100 customers across, uh, uh, I would say globally to many companies uh, at, at various levels and uh, especially we are uh, kind of specialized into Microsoft and uh, Oracle Primavera solutions. So this is what we are, uh, you know, 360 degree that is uh, covering people development, governance, systems and process. We are also into technology and the change management and also into product development. So anything you name it around project management will be there. So our journey is kind of going on for the last 18 years. So it we started in a in a very uh, humble way. Uh, we started with the kind of training uh, people into project management in the year 2006. So from there we have had many encounters in terms of training and consulting services uh, for, with, with various companies, with various partnerships. Uh, this is what we are. So, uh, you know, covering all the uh, spectrum of project management. So these are our partners. So we work with the PMI uh, closely associated as authorized training partners delivering all programs. And we are also a Microsoft solution uh, partner in modern work. And we are also partnered with ProChain, DPG, Intaware for risky projects, and we are also partnered with PM for NGOs. So these are our various clients with whom we work for the last 18 years. And uh, these are our training services. What we offer a uh, majority into uh, PMI's uh, certification, and also we we are into technology training services like project online or power bi or ccpm are into risky project so anything related to the technology side of project management training services so we'll be there so this is about the webinar we are uh, going to talk about this uh, a pro prompt engineering and how it is going to interact with ai systems and how it is going to be helpful in our project needs. So as project managers, we we know that you know productivity, innovation, and decision making. So this is what we've been doing it, and uh, how our work is going to be improvised and simplified using the AI system. So that is what we'll be uh, going to see. This is going to be highly impactful, and uh, it will be very fascinating as well. So if you look at uh, how these things are handled in a much better way and much simpler way uh, using this AI system. So I am very sure that all of you are going to be kind of uh, uh, much enlightened 
with the kind of uh, usage which uh, the AI has offered to us. So followed by this webinar, we'll also uh, have a two day hands on workshop for uh, especially related uh, on this topic like prompt engineering for project professionals. So we will introduce you at the end of the uh, webinar. And the key features of this webinar are going to be like how you should or you'll be learning to automate, assist and augment your project work and how you should use the ideas, you know, which and, and use it ready made in your project and how you should be generating your feasibility studies or managing your risks or your decision making, how you can do it better using AI. So this is definitely going to boost your productivity. So he's our speaker for today's webinar. So Mr. Vijay Prashant, he comes with 15 years of experience and uh, he has almost all certifications under PMI, right from PMP to ACP, PBA, and recently he's also a PMP certified professional. And uh, our journey especially has started uh, with uh, Prashant completing a very specific program called leadership in generative AI from ISB two years before. And from then he started using it in our projects, you know, helping people to, to make the projects better and uh, deliver it with efficiency or improving the forecasting or automating the workflows. So that is what you will be seeing it here. So we have uh, Sinivasan sir with us. So I'm sure many of you will know Sinivasan sir. So he is the founder director of ProVentures. Uh, he's been uh, uh, into this training and consulting for the last uh, 35 years now. So he will also be a part of the uh, speakers forum. So any questions you have about this uh, program, you can put it across both to Prashant and Sinivasan sir. So this is going to be a 1.5 hours webinar session. So you anytime if you have any questions, you can always raise your hand or post it in the chat or you can unmute and speak to the ask the speaker directly. And as I said, this webinar will carry 1.5 PDUs. So at the end of the webinar, we will share a short feedback. So you will have to fill up that and we will be sending you your webinar certificate shortly after that. Right. So any if you need any kind of materials related to the session that will be shared on request. All right. So thank you so much once again for having joined us for the webinar today, taking your time off. And with this, I'll hand over the session to Mr. Prashant or to you, Prashant. All right, thank you. Uh, good evening all. So I'll just share my screen. Yeah, so um, we'll be predominantly next one hour, we'll be focusing on uh, what uh, is generative AI uh, and how do we use the generative AI in, uh, for, for our project management related activities for effective project delivery. Now, when we speak about AI, AI is, uh, a vast area, so starting from uh, uh, a simple game related programs which can actually play uh, when we versus computer, we all used to play those kind of games. So starting from uh, game related computers to the advanced uh, systems like so automated cars, automated self-driving cars, all or up until that. So it's it's a wide a wide area. So including the robotics, everything everything put together inside it. So now, when uh, being specific about uh, our application of AI in in project management, uh, today's uh, theme is we are limiting our, our discussions or our, our uh, uh, topics towards generative AI in project management, and the two specifically on the large language models. So we'll quickly have an introduction or uh, an idea of uh, where this actually the artificial intelligence has started. So we knowingly or unknowingly, we have been using artificial intelligence for quite some time, but more than a few decades till now. So uh, if you look at it, the roots of artificial intelligence started way back in 1940s. So starting with uh, an uh, artificial neural networks, which are created back in 1940s, and um, a usage of uh, uh, computing machines 
to decode the messages during World War II. So then uh, they started with publishing some concept papers where uh, computers can start thinking, machines can start thinking and start communicating with you. Uh, so the back then, the papers what uh, uh, were produced by, I mean, submitted by uh, Alan Turing, who is considered to be the father of artificial intelligence and all, they had a concept where uh, the type printing machines can actually communicate, they mimic the com com the communication of a human being with through a machine. So that is where it actually started. Uh, then uh, furthermore enhancements based on uh, those concept papers are made and then uh, they kind of uh, came out with Turing tests in 1950s where uh, it, the machines actually, I mean, as we, as we uh, discussed now, the type printing machines actually communicate back to you, so mimicking a human conversation. So that is uh, where the, the roots for uh, AI started from there. It uh, went on to uh, a large developments up until the last decade of 2020s where uh, it has become very popular and every day we have been using it. So if you look at the, the application of, of AI, it is again, it it can be applied in wide range of tasks. It can perform a wide range of tasks it's because the landscape of AI is too big. Now, uh, the most popularity has come with uh, uh, the IBM Watson, which has defeated uh, the chess champion at the time. Um, and also the further enhancement of that where we went into a model called deep learning, where it actually uh, defeated the world champion in, in a game called Go, a Chinese-based uh, checkers game. So, uh, and after that, a little bit of enhancements in voice recognition, uh, natural language processing, and then with recent introduction of uh, the GPTs, then the, it became a revolution. So if you look at the landscape of artificial intelligence, we actually look at one part of it now, especially after 2020's introduction to chat GPT. Um, we speak predominantly on the, the machine learning part of it. So artificial intelligence includes a lot other areas also. But our discussion and our usage during our workshop or during this webinar, what we are going to discuss will be around predominantly around this. So this is on the machine learning and the deep learning and the neural networks part. So how do we leverage the capabilities of this machine learning uh, part in our uh, regular usage so that we will be able to Yeah, so that we will be able to leverage the the, the power of these machine learning uh, algorithms to effectively deliver our projects. So that's where uh, I'm coming from. So if you look at it, uh, the machine learning part is which is I've highlighted just now. So I'll just rename this. And if you look at the this area of it, the robotics. Now with introduction to uh, robotic surgeries, uh, robotic personal assistance, you know, cognitive cyber security related technology that is being developed and uh, and to that matter, uh, we have that uh, emotional analytics, sentiment analysis. So it's it's wide range of applications that are there as part of AI. So if we categorize this AI from its inception up until now into two important categories, we kind of call one part as the traditional AI and the second part as generative AI. So introduction of generative AI happened much later. So that has actually opened the windows for artificial intelligence to be adapted in variety of tasks and also variety of industries. Now, if you uh, look at what is traditional AI. So traditional AI is actually a branch of artificial intelligence. It's again, one part of artificial intelligence, which predominantly focuses on problem solving. So uh, speech recognition, problem solving, uh, you know, translating the languages, decision-making, pattern matching, so this kind of activity. So whatever the data that is already available, it goes into the data, it picks up the patterns, it picks up uh, the, the matching criteria of the data, and then it actually shows, shows the results, gives the insights and analytics. But when it comes to generative AI, as the name suggests, 
it is something which has the capability to generate more data. So it actually can scale its memory, scale its knowledge to a large extent. So that is where it um, the, the systems like computer vision, the image processing, video uh, development. So these kind of applications are being possible uh, because of the introduction of generative AI. So now today we, we go home and we call Alexa and say switch on the TV, switch on the fan. So all these things, how does Alexa understand? So Alexa already knows or, or it got trained on certain data and also it keeps improving its knowledge. So when you when you go and speak, a few more things which it cannot understand, it, it keeps developing its knowledge. So that's how the development of generative AI has come. Now coming to implementing the generative AI in terms of applications, so if you look at uh, this um, picture is my slide changed? Not yet. Okay. Uh, just give me one second. Uh, yeah, and now it got changed. All right. Okay. So if you look at the applications of uh, generative AI, specifically in uh, um, wide range of industry. If you look at the art and design, so generating uh, new pictures, new designs, uh, text-based uh, images, all this stuff, that part that happens on uh, the art and design to music composition, which is again a different industry. It can compose music based on certain uh, uh, inputs that we give. The content creation, creating of videos, uh, again, the videos and uh, images, all that. So fashion and product design, fraud detection. So all the credit card frauds or any fraud uh, detection that it is trained on, it can do it. And a lot of uh, work on AI being done, done in the healthcare industry where they have to deal with a lot of wide range of data to in order to understand. For example, if you take any clinical trial related data, so the insights from the data, instead of uh, we going and manually going and getting it, it's it's close to impossible. Practically, it's very difficult to get it. But uh, with a system like uh, AI, which can actually read through the data and make patterns and and bring out some insights, that the effort that it goes into these kind of analytics is is enormously increased. So these kind of uh, applications, when from a wide range of industries, has become possible because of the generative AI. So the main strength of generative AI lies in learning from the existing artifacts and generate new uh, realistic artifacts and scale its memory. So that in future, when you are going and communicating with the system and asking the system for a few more additional data, it still gives you the information. So how these things work? How are we going to configure this or how do I, are we going to build these systems? That is something which we are not going to touch it. But how, the systems are already there. So we have enough technology available in terms of uh, what it can do today. So that what it can do, how it can help us, how can we adapt it to make our lives easier? So our, our, our work more efficient is something what we are actually trying to do. Now, if you look at the modern AI from a context of uh, the technology or the, the ways in which it works, so this is how uh, the modern AI can be relatively classified. So the generative AI, which act creates a new content autonomously, when you go and start giving uh, speaking to a system, it generate pictures. Now, DALI or the, all these uh, different algorithms that are uh, available for the on, on the generative AI front. The sentiment analysis, which uh, uses GANs, the adversarial networks, uh, diffusion models. So all these things uh, can uh, be possible using a generative AI. So a one variant of generative AI, which is specifically test based, text based, is this called as LLM. So LLM stands for large language models. So these models can uh, train themselves on different text based inputs that we give. They, they scale up their memory and the training data from uh, uh, the text based formats and it processes the text and generates additional text and responses back to us. So one of uh, such uh, LLM model, which is called as GPT. So there is a, a generative pre-trained transformers. That is what GPT means. So that is uh, what we have seen in the form of chat GPT. So many of us would have used chat GPT for various purposes. So how does chat GPT understand and how it can help? So, so it is built on 
uh, again a technology called deep learning, which you see here. So deep learning is um, uh, is is an algorithm which actually learns on its own and stores the data inside the neural networks. So when you say neural network, it consists of multiple neurons, the neurons like how our brain consists of. So all these neurons are connected in such a way that uh, they, they process the data seamlessly and then again give back when we act, actually ask. So when you go into details of it, there are different types of neural networks and all which we are not going to focus on. But uh, this uh, neural networks has actually uh, brought in a lot of diversity into artificial intelligence. Now, for example, if you take uh, uh, Tesla auto driving cars, so how does it work? So it, it has the cameras that are fixed around the car and these cameras will take millions of pictures in a minute and they send it across into a neural network. So these pictures are processed and then the system identifies that, okay, there is a turn on the on the road or there's a traffic on the road, there's an obstacle. So apply a brake, take a left turn, take a right turn. All these things are possible because of the, the capability of the neural network to process that so many pictures in a very short time. So with today's availability of computer space, the, the RAM, the memory that is available, so these neural networks are becoming easier to deploy. So computer vision is one such neural network. Our NLP natural language processing, whatever we are using in our Zoom and Teams for uh, transcripting what we speak. So those things are built on these deep learning uh, algorithms, speech recognition. Now, in fact, if you look at my background, so it, the, the image or the video that is being sent into the system is being processed and it can separate my background out and me separately and it can have a virtual background at the behind. So these kind of applications, I mean, knowingly, unknowingly, we have been using it, but this is all part of the deep learning uh, part. Now, deep learning is actually a subset of machine learning. So what is machine learning? So it's, as the name suggests, you know, machines, can they learn on their own? That is where it all started. So what if a machine can learn and think and, and talk back? So that is where it started. Now, uh, machine learning is, is something which trains, an algorithm which trains itself, learning the patterns from the data and making some predictions out of it. Now, we all use Netflix. So when you go and watch, or YouTube for that matter. So when you go and watch certain kind of videos, the algorithm actually goes and uh, suggests you the videos which are related to the content or the genre, what you are actually watching. So how is it possible? So it keeps a track of what kind of videos you're watching. It keeps a track of all the genres. And then it, uh, it makes the patterns out of it and then picks up the videos which might be of interest for you and then they show it in front of YouTube. YouTube has billions of videos which are being uh, uploaded every day. But from that, it, it it has the capability to process it in a, such a short time and give us what we would like to see, what are our areas of interest. So that is how the machine learning uh, works. So the extension of this machine learning is this deep learning, what we're speaking about. When we speak about machine learning, now the YouTube or uh, Netflix example, what we took, when you watch a video, a video should be linked or tagged to a genre and it should be tagged to the type of the uh, content. It's a, maybe let's say it's a web series or a, a short film or a documentary or a feature film. So these kind of, you, you label it, you, you structure it. You know, machine learning generally learns from the structured or labeled data and then makes patterns out of it. But when I go and talk or when I go and chat with a system like ChatGPT, that is not structured, that is not labeled. I will go and say, what is, what is so and so, or what is, uh, who, who, anything that that is related to it. So when you ask something, when from an unstructured data, so that is where uh, the system should be able to reciprocate the same results, or you know, come back to us with some meaningful insights. That is where the deep learning actually helps. When unstructured data is there not labeled data is there, still it should be able to process. So for that, it needs a huge amount of data and a processing capability to process it at a very fast space. So that is where the deep learning comes into picture. And all that uh, language LLMs, whatever we're speaking, large language models like ChatGPT and, and all stuff, they are 
all part of uh, uh, the deep learning algorithms. They use deep learning algorithms. But ChatGPT, as we said, uh, it is uh, uh, it focuses predominantly on the text side of it. But it, for example, if you again we we go back to Tesla, it focuses on the computer vision. It, it focuses on the image processing side of it. So it can do multiple things. Right? But the end of the day, the concept lies the same. It has and multiple neurons which are connected to each other, and then they. They learn, keep learning from them, and, and scale their data up, and also keep uh, doing it. So this is how uh, the modern AI is actually evolving, and it is being available for all of us. Now, how do we leverage the capability of this modern AI in project management? So when we speak about project management, um, project management is, again, we are dealing with future projects are always future. So when we speak about future, there is always a lot of uncertainty involved in it. And project managers generally juggle around multiple activities like planning, scheduling, risk management, change management, communications, uh, the, you know, progress reporting, all these different, different elements what the project manager generally does. So out of all these things, what are all the things that we can actually ask our AI assistants to do? Now, one one such example, what we have been, most of us uh, would have already used it. There are a lot of uh, meeting assistants that are available in the market. So they join along with you, they take a transcript of it, they process the transcript and generate the meeting minutes and give you. So again, the accuracy of it, it varies based on how much it is trained and how much uh, uh, data is available for that to process. But again, uh, but it still does a good job, further which we can actually do it. Instead of we coming into a meeting and taking a notes, we can ask our agent to come and then they, they, they can come and do the work. So beyond these things, what are available? There are also certain things which we can do in terms of project management to help us more to be, be more effective and also make our life easy. So once such things, if you look at it, broad categorize it into three things. One is the automating the routine, routine task. So you there are certain things which a project manager does as a routine. Now, for example, every week we need to send a project status report. So instead of we doing it, we can ask our uh, we, we can we can use the AI to generate the project reports. Now, project report needs insights. What happened on the project? It needs some analytics and analysis to be done. So that part we can we can again use AI to drill down into the data, and it has a track of historical data. Compare it, and then bring in the insights and analysis about the current project. Right. So assisting in complex analysis automating the routine tasks and augmenting human efforts. So when you say augmenting human efforts, it 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 only mimics what the project manager does. For example, uh, there is an issue that has occurred in the project and that has caused an impact on one of the objectives. Let's say it caused a schedule delay. Now, what is the impact of schedule or, or impact of this issue on so-and-so milestones and on the overall project? So these kind of forecasting, so these kind of uh, uh, things the impact of this issue has arised some more risks in our project for the future remaining tasks that are being happening so what are where are these going in so how do we leverage the ai to generate these kind of informations so what if scenarios what if this goes wrong in our project so instead of we going and trying to do it based on large set of data it it can give more uh, accurate insights into the project and the project forecasting. So this is where we can actually uh, leverage the generative AI in project management. Now, when we speak about uh, automating the routine tasks, we already have something called as RPAs, you know, robotic process automations. So why do we need generating AI? RPAs do, do good, so why do we need that? Now, when we speak about uh, uh, RP, RPA and the generative AI, one major difference between these two is RPA is only repeating the that same task again and again. For example, if you send a form, collect some reports, it will put that, uh, whenever the form is submitted, it will create a line item in the Excel spreadsheet. So that is a robotic process automation, that's RPA. But when it comes to 
the same form submitting a response you pick up the pick up the response understand on a scale of whatever uh, 1 to 10 what where the rating has been for example you take it and then uh, generate some analytics out of it and also give some suggestions on how we can improve that experience of the user so these kind of generating additional information from the data that is ex that is available so that is what they where the uh, the capability of generative ai or usage of generative ai adds a lot of value to us all right so then uh, if you if you look at uh, the analyzing the complex uh, data like uh, uh, i mean i'm speaking about this assisting in complex analysis now for example let's say there are a lot of resources there are certain set of skill set that is required for our project you need to identify the skill set then you map it with the resource pool you go through the resources then negotiate with the functions you get the uh, uh, approval then assign, then start the project with the certain resources so instead of me going and manually going through the resource pool and trying to find out all these things AI systems can can do it in much quicker time. So it saves us time, it saves us energy, and then it will say that so and so resources uh, uh, skill set is matching, his performance is matching, is available during that time, is not available during that time. So this kind of uh, complex analysis uh, can be done uh, using. AI systems and it's not only limited to it but also the predictions when we say predictions based on the historical information similar kind of projects they have had some uh, these kind of risks in that so it can come and give you build a risk register and say that these risks based on our previous experience these risks are inevitable these risks can happen in your project so that saves a lot of time. You're conducting a brainstorming session, collect the inputs from the stakeholders, then ask them what is the analysis, what is the probability impact. So all these things, it can give you a first cut foundation and then you can start the discussion on it. So it saves a lot of time and effort for us. Then uh, augmenting the human efforts, again, pre predominantly when it comes to the decision making, backing up the decisions that we take in the project management uh, during the delivery of the project is very important. So this backing of decisions comes from a, a, a deep analysis of the existing data. So it can be uh, the current project's data in comparison with the previous experiences, then you come and say that if you take a call on this, if you go, are going to take this decision, this is going to be the impact that you will have on the overall project. So these kind of taking, generating the ability or building the ability to take right decisions with the right data backed up. So that helps us in actually taking, uh, you know, better decisions for the project delivery. So these kind of things actually, uh, we can leverage from the existing Gen AI's capabilities. And it is not only limited to it, but Gen AI is still growing. So as we move forward, it keeps on adding additional capabilities, which we can further enhance it. Now, how do we uh, really go and leverage Gen AI? So do we need to, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, post workshop or once uh, post the webinar if you need this information whatever we have just discussed is available in this form of these slides so you can have a uh, we can we can share these with you after the workshop is done so if you if you look at it these are uh, the complex analysis what resource allocation uh, risk management change management project prioritization so whenever that complex data incentive uh, data intensive decisions needs to be taken and in uncertain uh, uncertainty is high uh, so that that is where generative ai can really help us in terms of taking the right decisions with a proper backup of the data uh, all right so um, then you can see the augmenting the human efforts with generative AI. So the data-driven insights, predictive analysis. So that's what we have discussed. It is, it's again documented here. So we'll share this with you after the webinar so you can use it for your future references. Now, how do we adapt the generative AI and leverage its capability to effectively deliver the projects or improvise the project delivery? So in order to deploy it, do we need to really yeah so do we need to really um, learn statistics maths coding to deploy the engines no they are already there so the data engineers and data scientists uh, have 
done tremendous research in terms of AI and then these all these GPT models and all have been built. So we don't really need to go and and do anything or build something really new from the scratch. So then what do we need to do? So we need to use the existing system, communicate with the existing systems, and we need to make that existing systems work for us. So how do we how do we make make them work for us by using the prompt engineering? So what is a prompt? So what is prompt and well, okay what is prompt engineering? Let us say that. So prompt is a trigger which you are giving it to the AI system to respond in a way which you want it to respond. So when we say large language models and natural language uh, large language models, they they have that data with them. But how do we extract the data out of it? So that is where you need to, uh, you know, give these prompts and then uh, bring the data out of it. I mean, make it work for you. That's exactly what it means. So it is it is a practice of designing effective queries that allows us to extract the output from AI system like ChatGPT, for example. So instead of uh, simple instructions like how we are chatting across uh, on on a chat box or something, instead of this, if you can craft the 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 sentences in in a certain way, these systems can be more effective and they can give us uh, more realistic responses. You know, the the efficiency of the systems can be improvised by using the prompts. So that is the reason why we need. Uh, the prompt engineering and we and we need to learn how do we actually uh, do the prompt engineering so why uh, again why prompt engineering when we speak about this this most of these gpts will work in such a way that you build a conversation with the system it is not that you go and open google and then type one query and then search and close it. it it doesn't work like that so you need to build a conversation you need to tell the system systematically what we would need step by step we need to keep on adding additional prompts in order to bring the bring the the right outputs in a way in which we would like to have it so as a part of our session definitely we will we will uh, quickly have a look at what it is and how it actually works but uh, this is something which has been a buzz around the world. Now, how do I make my GPTs work for me? So there is one simple uh, okay case which we have picked up, which I'm going to do it live uh, right now. We will we will take that case and we'll try to solve that that problem using uh, a GPT. Uh, now the GPT what we are using is again the chat GPT the same chat GPT what we are going to use now how do we go and do that before we go into that uh, can we have a quick uh, break for any questions so far I think that's correct uh, Sam Prashant uh, so we'll give a small pause in the meantime you can prepare and yeah. uh, take some questions Yeah, anyone have any questions to Prashant? Um, hello, sir. Hi, Prashant. Um, just one question is, um, um, I know um, AI is going to be the latest buzz and it is continuing, but um, in, in in regular project management tasks, you know, how can we use this? Do we need any specific license to use Gen AI or um, how, how we can bring this into actual practice? And, or do we actually need this or is it just going to be a hype for some time or how is it? So it, it was really a kind of you know, a surprise for me, actually, you know, this kind of prompt engineering AI for project managers. All this is like kind of you now. Will it really work in regular project management, day-to-day -day activities? Yeah, certainly. Uh, so definitely, uh, in our experience, what we have been doing uh, or adapting AI in a, in the projects that we deliver, it will ease up our job. So now, as you rightly said, is it going to be a buzz around the world and it will again fade off like any other some other technology? May not be. In my personal opinion, if you ask me. Uh, 
if the question is, will AI really replace me? Then answer is no, <laughs> as of now. Okay. So, okay, uh, okay. but it will make your life very easy, for sure. Now, we, we, will, will, okay. we will see uh, in real time uh, how actually AI will will help us. So, okay. I'll take one one case, which we are going to see that. I'll, I'll show it to you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and uh, I think uh, the follow-up yes, question, uh, what you asked is, uh, uh, the pricing part of it, uh, in fact, uh, like any other systems, uh, uh, yeah, you will get something free, but uh, that may be good for us to get a feel of it. But if you really okay, want so. to make sense, uh, it should be a, a, a subscription-based version. Uh, even when we well. were preparing for this program, as well as for the future full first workshop, uh, yes, you will see the difference between a paid version and uh, uh, free version. And uh, Prashant actually will uh, explain it at the end. Okay, what is the difference and all? Yeah. Sure, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Prashant. Thank you, sir. Sino, sir. Thank you. Yeah. All right. All right. Welcome. So uh, I just stopped my screen share. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, coming back to uh, the case today, any more questions? I can. Can I move forward? Yeah. Are we good? All right. Okay. So if you look at the case study, so uh, this is what we are actually trying to solve now. So uh, we need, we will use uh, a GPT model, Chat GPT, to build a project schedule for an ERP implementation project. So the condition is the schedule should contain uh, the phases and the activities. It should have a categorization between that. And all these activities should be estimated in terms of durations. And also the dependencies should be identified. So we will build that schedule using ChatGPT instead of we going and typing everything. And then uh, we will make it ready to be imported into a project scheduling applications like Microsoft Project or Primavera for further development and monitoring purposes. So this is the situation what we need to address and let us see how uh, chat gpt can help us in terms of uh, developing a project schedule in a short time so let me share my screen uh, before that uh, okay so this is what we are going to do inside chat gpt so we are going to build a schedule in a tabular format and we will ask for the different attributes of the schedule in the first step then uh, we will go into uh, aligning the schedule to the format which Microsoft Project can understand. So we'll ask ChatGPT to revise the schedule in multiple iterations so that it will be aligned 100% to uh, make it ready to be imported into Microsoft Project immediately. And then uh, inside Microsoft Project, <clears throat> we will see how the schedule is built and how do we make necessary changes to it. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so this is what we are going to do now. So I'll shift my screen from the presentation to the chat GPT interface. So we are using that uh, GPT 4.0, the latest model. So there are also other models which you can use it. So some are free, some are paid, but yeah, we are going to use the chat GPT 4.0 model. So now, uh, according to our case, uh, what we wanted to do is we are trying to um, develop a schedule for an ERP project. So let me go and uh, key in the, the prompt for developing the schedule. You are yet to share the session. Is it not shared? Oh. Yeah. Now? Yeah. yeah, it's coming up. All right, okay. So, for, uh, I'm, I'm just uh, typing it out here. So build a schedule for ERP implementation project for my customer and uh, I want um, with phases and activities in each phase. So I'm trying to define the, the, the entire schedule. I'm going to organize it in multiple phases and each phase, what are the different activities that are there. Now, whatever I'm doing it here, when you do the same thing again, it may not give you the same result. 
So as I said, it is a self-learning model and it scales up. With every input that we give, it keeps improvising its knowledge. So as we move forward, the more and more we use it, it becomes better and better. So uh, the results will not exactly match, but that is where our intervention is required. So the results, what the chat GPT is giving, is it in alignment with the project management practices or not? So that is where our um, interference is required. So the activities in each phase. Um, OK, estimate the durations for each activity in days. Also, define the predecessors for the activities. So this is a prompt that I've given. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that I want an ERP implementation plan with phases and activities, activities inside each phase. So all the phases should be further drilled down into activities. Then estimate each activity as duration in terms of days. And also, you know, the network should be formed. So let me go and define the predecessors. So when I go and click on it, um, it gives me a schedule like this. So will this actually work? It may not work for us um, in, in practice. So now this is a prompt. It has built the schedule. If you look at it, all the phases are defined. Initiation requirements, uh, gathering, system design, configure phase, migration, all this it is, it is it is building. And including the activities and the durations and the predecessors, everything is being built. But this may not be usable for us. So how do I improvise it? Now, as I said, we are building a conversation with the system and we are not not searching for independent queries so chat gpt will always keep a track of the chat as long as you are communicating with chat gpt inside the same chat it keeps a track of what you have done earlier and then improvises it and gives you now i'll ask give the schedule in a tabular format So it's analyzing and now the same schedule, whatever it has given <clears throat> in a text based format, I'm asking it to give it in a tabular format. So it runs in the background and it actually gives us the tabular format. The earlier one, did you delete it? Okay. So you can see the code that is running here, the Python script. You can also have a look at that if you would like to. And if you look at the the entire thing, um, it is it is actually giving us in a tabular format. So when I expand it, you can see the phase, activity, duration, and predecessors. Everything is given. Um, and if you see <clears throat> the predecessors, it is taking it as 1.1. So each phase along with the activities. And so it is phase one, so 1.1 1 .1 is activities. That's how it's identifying it. Now, what we'll do is we'll try to improvise it in such a way that um, um, Chan, that script that is running, is it running by itself or? Yeah, have it, you will run it, it will run, run, run by itself. That is, that is okay. ChatGPT. Yeah. Is it a paid version or a free version of ChatGPT? Uh, it is it is a paid version, but the functionality lies the same uh, even in free uh, free version, okay. except for right. the last step, which I'll show it to you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so I'm going to replace uh, uh, the predecessors here with the row numbers instead of the uh, instead of uh, using the hierarchy 1.1 1 .1 and all. So instead, I'll simply use uh, row numbers there. So now you can see the predecessors are replaced with row numbers. Now, one thing, what happens with, uh, now if you look at it, all the phases and their respective activities, duration in terms of days and the predecessors, everything is given there. Now, one thing what happens is when, because we are we are trying to build the schedule here and take it into Microsoft project and 
import it for for the for the development there now what we need to do here is uh, this microsoft project doesn't understand these phases you know so these phases should be merged into one column and it should come as a summary task and the activity is under it now what we will do is we will try to go and merge the phase column with the activity column with each phase as the summary of the activities under it now let us see how it actually improvises the table Now you can see um, when I go and uh, expand it, now you can see the data migration phase and the related activities, uh, configuration phase and related activities. So it, it actually merged both the activities and the, uh, the duration columns. But uh, when you want to bring this into, into Microsoft project predominantly. Microsoft project doesn't differentiate between the summary task based on its name. So we need to bring in a classification there. Now what I'll do is there is a column by name outline level using which Microsoft project actually differentiates between the activity and the summaries. So what I'll do is I'll insert a new column with name outline level and mark all the phases as one and activities as two so i'm just adding one more attribute into it along with the row numbers so now you can see there is okay everything got marked with uh, with one here. All right. So uh, <clears throat> activities marked as two. So let us see, uh, activities should be marked as two. So let us kind of understand that what it does. No, it still didn't correct it. Um, I, I, hmm? No, no, it's okay. Uh, the third one, if you, if you look at it, the previous version, what we have done. So if you look at this, uh, this actually uh, builds the, the, the plan like this. So, uh, now in the current version, it become uh, the table of format, but uh, here the same prompts I have used it. Every activity has at least one predecessor and one successor. All the checks that we wanted to do it, we have done it. And you can see the phase and activity are separated out here. Now, um, let us go and merge these phase and activity inside this plan. Now, with activity column and make phases as summary of the activities of anism under it so let's see how it does So if you if you look at uh, the 
overall performance of uh, any of these uh, artificial intelligence based systems uh, as we discussed you know it takes large data and lot of time in order to train these models so um, as of now at present with whatever information is there so the accuracy of these models is relatively limited but yeah going forward as we keep on using this this as we as we learned that it is going to scale up on its own so these things will actually improvise a lot going forward okay so we already downloaded that in in the form of an excel download the table in an excel format so the merged data is again uh, created in the form of an excel file so that's why i said so the moment you go and put a trigger on the top i mean the prompt on the top it always follows the conversation from there so that is how uh, it always builds so now if you look at it okay so this is the excel sheet what i have just downloaded it now you can see the 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 row number the outline level the tasks with the outline level 1 as the predecessors i mean the summary tasks and outline level 2 as uh, the non summary tasks and you can also see there is a row called successes which we <clears throat> we have asked but this thing is actually not required so we can we can just delete these successes and the durations we can restore it and uh, now using this excel sheet we will go into microsoft project and then try to um, you know generate developer schedule so if you import it in microsoft project what happens how how does it look like so that's what we will try to quickly look at it so i'll uh, give this screen share to sam because he's ready with uh, in interest of time we uh, have the microsoft project already open and ready so sam will share the screen and try to import i'm sending the same excel sheet to him so he will import the the plan into microsoft project and see how a schedule development will happen yeah sam you can share the screen Sam? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. So you can. This. Uh, meantime, I'll just. Yeah. 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 Uh, meantime, I'll just introduce this uh, project. This is basically uh, what we are seeing is a Gantt chart from uh, Microsoft Project. Um, uh, so I've already saved this file uh, with the title, and this is basically uh, looks like um, on the left hand side uh, it is like our uh, tabular format where uh, we can. Uh, uh bring in all the data what we have seen in the excel format right the columns and all i can basically bring it here with the same name like outline level you can see the column name outline level with the durations okay and also i need this predecessor so i'll just bring them here and uh, now what i'll do i will go and uh, uh, shall i download the same excel or it is uh, one second I'll download it again. So now what basically happens is we can uh, I can directly bring uh, import that Excel what uh, Prashant has created just now. So I'll go to file open and then I'll browse it for the Excel spreadsheet. Yeah, the plan one okay is what much ERP plan is what uh, uh, create generated from AI. 
and then I'll just perform some importing uh, steps. Okay, since I'm doing it for the first time, I need to go through all these uh, importing steps. All right, so I need to just uh, maintain this mapping. Um, row ID is basically called uh, uh, ID as a uh, in Microsoft project, and then task is called it as name. And then uh, predecessors, we call it as predecessors. I just need to map them and then quickly durations with the duration. Yeah, everything is mapped and I'll just click on finish. So the Texel, what we have, uh, what AI is generated can seamlessly integrated, uh, imported with to the Microsoft. And then the plan is ready actually. If you see the GAN chart on the right hand side is the GAN bar schedule network diagram. Uh, and on the left hand side with pre dependencies. Accordingly, uh, the start and finish dates. These are calculated start and finish dates with the durations. The total duration of this entire project is 205 days. Uh, with the WPS, I can basically see the level one activities and then the all level activities like this. And from here we can perform uh, all the uh, see it has come with the scheduling best practices that we can further improve. And then we can identify the critical path out of this network. Um, and then uh, yeah, other other uh, uh, scheduling practices we can implement uh, using the Microsoft project. Uh, any other things, Anna? Yeah, so this is uh, predominantly how we can take one case and for example, schedule building is one of the primary activities of project manager. The whole, the heart of our heart of foundation of uh, the plan is uh, built on the schedule. Mute yourself, Sam. Yeah, sorry, Sam is right beside me. So yeah, both of us are unmute, all right. So uh, the core part of <clears throat> the schedule. So this is uh, something which can save a lot of time and effort from the project manager. Now, um, I'll hand over yeah. the session to Srinivasan, sir. I can share the screen, sir, if you want, or you can take over. Yeah, I think you will keep it open. Uh, you share one of the screen uh, so that uh, we can switch. When Sam showed the exchange, one story came to my mind. Uh, so in, uh, that happened in final year engineering college. So there is a group of five guys uh, who developed one IC engine. They worked very hard, designed and all. Among the five people, there is one guy <coughs> who is uh, basically a cheerleader. So he don't do any work. Uh, he only makes the others happy. So he don't know anything about the technology engineering, but the Viva was came, he was very much afraid. So the other four people said, if the, uh, the examiner asks you to how to start the engine, you need to pull this rope, engine will start. So he understood it well. And uh, examiner asked exactly the same question, how to, can you run this engine? This guy said, I will run the engine. And then he just pulled the rope and it started and he got the first prize. Okay, so thanks, uh, Sam, and you are getting the first prize. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's move on to some questions. Uh, and uh, uh, basically, what you are seeing is uh, probably a glimpse of it. Uh, uh, but uh, well, I mean, we took some time before jumping into this bandwagon of uh, AI in project management. Uh, but actually we wanted to do a, a good job. So we have basically the curriculum ready. Uh, Ratna or Prashant, can you show that screen? Uh, the next one so that I'll just give a couple of minutes walk through. So we are planning for a, a, a kind of a micro credential or I would say eight credit uh, uh, hands on program uh, to basically build a a full flown inter integrated project management plan using AI. So that means uh, it will basically, next slide, um, it will basically 
adapt uh, we can say the top 10 or 15 best practices in project management in terms of uh, uh, developing a charter analyzing a stakeholder building a work breakdown structure developing a schedule doing a resource planning performing risk analysis and then building an s curve and also as part of execution and monitoring and controlling trying to build some reports and uh, other things so this uh, actually we want to do the entire project plan, plan development and run one case to build a, a report uh, in 6 to 8 hours okay doing the whole thing using chat gpt and what we are attempting is uh, let's say a team comes up with pharma okay and another team with construction another team with it each of them will build their own project plan and then with all those things uh, done together okay so in our 20 years practice everyone appreciates the uh, project management best practices but when it comes to adoption uh, they are saying this some excuses management uh, kind of uh, points the finger to project managers project managers points the fingers to cft cft points the finger to team members contractors etc so how this whole system can be improved so that is an attempt that we are planning to solve to some extent with what we have learned in ai as well as in project management so this is something we are trying to schedule it uh, sometime in november or early december okay so in case everyone wants so it will be a full engaging six to eight hours uh, constantly you doing it not just demoing it is what we are planning to do uh, so this is some small insight from me about what are the next steps around this uh, we have another 15 clear minutes uh, so we can handle questions uh, any type of questions because if you can do things with project management with operations with support everywhere we can apply so I now leave this floor for open for questions. So during that session, uh, which is being planned later, but thank you first for organizing such a session. So uh, thank you, you and the team. And uh, I think this is the most uh, hot and you know most um, required session for us because uh, otherwise, you know, you end up doing all this ourselves, preparing one by one, you know, either waiting for some templates from somebody or maybe if you're new to the organization, it is very difficult to build this initially. So I think this is something going to come up very useful. Um, but during that session or after the session, um, are we going to build any, uh, you know, uh, prepare any scripts or can we get some scripts later so that we, we, which we can use in the daily life? I think most of it, uh, uh, you are going to write the scripts for your domain. Okay, okay, okay. it will be your entire IP. Uh, okay. But we may also come up with some templates. Uh, uh, yes, those sir, templates, yeah. we will basically give it to all the uh, uh, workshop audience. Sure. Okay. Is it yeah, Suresh? Or who, who has yes, sir, Suresh. Suresh okay, sir, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Suresh. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Any because other those templates? Yeah, will be very useful. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Prashant, you can improve or correct me if I am saying anything different. Uh, sir, I, I was in a conversation with Sam. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. No issue. Yeah. Okay. Other others? Any further questions? Uh, as I have also given the feedback link in the chat. Yeah, if you are so, any of you have interest in participating in the uh, full blown eight hours workshop uh, or run over two days, uh, uh, you can basically express your interest. We'll be in touch. And uh, yeah, these are the details. Uh, we just put it, but uh, there could be some minor variation here and there. But by and large, we will commit the states and the commercials as well. So good evening, Kiran here. Yes, Kiran. Uh, uh, 
thought I asked a lot of questions, but uh, actually, when I, of course I have gone, I have gone uh, undergone the trainings by PMI, uh, the prompt engineering and the generator AI camp uh, canvas, data canvas, and other things. Uh, one question was always running into my mind that how this general AI was uh, is going to affect the pro project scheduling and other things. That a bit is cleared now through Prashant uh, and. Uh, for that so further uh, is it like like now we have seen we have generated the schedule in gen a and preliminary things and relationships and we have put it into the msp uh, up mm. to what far i have seen now now yeah. uh, is there any is there any is there any the, these tools itself like oracle uh, the microsoft and uh, uh, sorry oracle uh, for the primary and microsoft for msp are they di directly planning anything like this uh, Anything? We, do we have any update on this, sir? Uh, very good question. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, Microsoft, uh, in a very very big scale, trying to build the Copilot and trying to integrate with uh, most of their applications. You will see a lot of announcements and other things coming up. And uh, uh, but uh, I think uh, uh, it will go by <laughs> yes, Prashant. You can take it. I, I can I can add some more. It. So, uh, see, uh, Microsoft, uh, as uh, Sinovasan sir rightly said, uh, Copilot, I mean, it's built on GPT-4, so same thing. Now, they have integrated it very closely into their Power Platform and other Office suite of applications, especially on the M365 front, on the cloud services. Now, uh, what Provinces we did is, we have built one project management information system on Microsoft's Power Platform. So, that actually uh, is built on Power Platform. It it brings in all the capabilities of a project management information system, including the schedule engine into it. Now, going forward in in, a, in our roadmap, in in uh, maybe uh, two or three quarters from now, this ChatGPT will be integrated into into that product as well. Now, there will be one screen on which the prompts, whatever we have given uh, in ChatGPT interface right now. So you'll be doing it inside the PMIS. So it will directly build the entire schedule, populate it in, inside the the schedule engine there, inside that uh, this is the PMI is what we are speaking. And it will develop a complete GAN chat and then give it to you with one click. So these kind of integrations are already available. So now what we have done is we have integrated this chat GPT into our system. So similarly, uh, Oracle also will come up with their uh, own version of uh, uh, generative AI integration on their cloud systems, but it's already there. That's why it's uh, what we are we're trying to say. When and maybe in in two to three quarters from now, we'll go live with that additional feature also. Yes, Kiran, does it answer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you. All right. It's a great move actually, and we more interested to more on that because. You know, ancestors is the major part of scheduling. Yeah. Around, uh, around the activities with 10,000 activities. Ah. Great help. Uh, uh, of course, I think I don't know. We don't have any update on the Oracle uh, on the Pimera and what they are right. doing. Right? You're right. You're right. You're right. As of now, there is no update. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. And 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 I can see that now we have done the uh, what is called uh, uh, linking part of the uh, schedule, and mm. uh, maybe further we can we can do something on uh, resource loading or anything on this side. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. yes. We can. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks a lot. Others. Uh, hi, hi, Sinvasan. Yeah. This is Vijay Gandhala. <laughs> Hello, Vijay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, thank you. <laughs> I, I think it is a, a really very good session for us. Uh, a lot of new things. Uh, good to know that you are already working on uh, integrating with ChatGPT into your uh, project management tools. Uh, it's very, very helpful. That's what I wanted to really say. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you.
uh, can, can we get this uh, recorded uh, part of it, uh, at least uh, the development of the schedule so that for our practice? Sure, sure. We'll, we'll make it available on YouTube. We'll share the link with you. Vijay, for you, for you, one small uh, feedback. My observation, based on whatever is, uh, see the the chart uh, prompt which you have started using it, uh, and it could not merge, and then it would not give that uh, sequence. I mean, outline number. The reason because you have done the merge first. Correct, Instead correct. of that, first you outline it. Outline and then number merge should it, be done. Think it should work. Yeah. No. I'm actually, sure. even even if we have done the outline number later, also it will work. But the thing is, when I I didn't ask uh, in the first prompt to give it in a tabular format. If I would have mm. asked in the first prompt to give it in a tabular format, the table wouldn't have been uh, come in an expanded mode, but it would have come in the same stat itself. Something. So uh, once some... everything once everything is completed, then we should convert into Excel. Yeah. So yeah. that is what we have done earlier. So I moved into the previous chat. Anyway, yeah. thank you. <laughs> <Yeah>. thank you. <laughs> okay. I think uh, it is like uh, uh, English uh, speaking course. There will be a lot of uh, courses on how to craft uh, prompts for Seriously, various sir. streams. Yeah. 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 So it is going to be a profession by itself for everyone. I think there will be a lot of students also, I guess, are participating in this uh, webinar today. So, guys, you should learn some of these things. Uh, uh, as part of this, yeah. yeah right. Obviously, sir, I, with my experience uh, with the chart GPT, I, I, because I have started using it from last four months, I can say. Mm -hmm. uh, primarily, I'm using it for uh, drafting my contractual letters to the client. I mm -hmm. have raw data and formulating it why? because uh, forming the sentences and all those things will take little time and uh, 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 maintaining it into the crisp format. So for that, we are, I'm using it. But definitely, as you refine the, your prompt, your results will be more uh, precise. Uh, that uh, actually a lot of, uh, it's, a, it's an interesting thing, uh, trial and error kind of thing. And what uh, one thing we should do is that what we have done, the trial and error, uh, those things we should keep it in a record uh, so that uh, next time we, we, should, we, will, mm. we will not start from the zero again. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a very good point uh, for everyone. Uh, we also for do this very diligently. Uh, I mean, we ask all our employees to use the paid version so that uh, uh, the GPT keeps a track of it. Uh, he learns what practices uh, provinces follow and it builds on it. Uh, so I think uh, if you want to use it in our core business, it is good to have a, uh, a paid version for uh, selected users or common users and then keep a track of it. Uh, uh, that will help a lot. Even I, my experience also as a course developer and uh, I consistently use this for various uh, um, courseware development, uh, mock test development, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so consistent usage through a common set of logins helps us to improve uh, as a continuous basis. Yeah, that's a good point. I think there was another question there from Farzana. This is uh, is this a domain neutral and can it be used by any industry? I think, uh, yes, it is uh, quite domain neutral. That's what I was telling. OK, so uh, it can be used uh, like uh, all we need to do is give the right keywords, sequences. So that's where the human intervention tailored to your company, your domain, your uh, way of doing work. OK, so that when we try to put it, it gives a uh, lot of things. And also, I think uh, when companies introduces, like Microsoft uh, introduces Copilot, that also shields the data going back to pool. Okay, you can ask questions within your own domain, and it pulls data from within your own data sources, and then gives you the answers. So you can basically shield your data and your queries and other practices from industry, so that uh, the proprietary uh, nature of the data can also be protected.
All right. Uh, I think we have five more minutes. Uh, any uh, questions that you wanted to ask? And uh, you can put it in a chat also. We will uh, read it out for you. And uh, if you have uh, not filled the feedback form, please, uh, it is there in the chat box. Uh, uh, please click and then submit your feedback. Any improvements in terms of uh, content, uh, future thoughts, uh, uh, feel free to express yourself and uh, we are an organization will adapt. Okay, we basically. Sir, you are already uh, already adapting, sir. You are um, before we ask anything only. You are um, giving all this kind of you know enhancements, so that is really commendable actually. So I was thinking about the session. Uh, I could I missed the session from some maybe some Microsoft or some PMI, and I was thinking about it, and this came all all through my way. <laughs> thank you, thank you, sir. So without telling only, I mean I think your team is really doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, one question um, uh, on this one is other than generating like project management templates like this, um, are there any is there any, any other way we can use this Gen AI like you know, like creating project charters or project management plans or anything else we can use this for or um, you know? Yeah, that's for what uh, we intend to do in the workshop. Uh, okay. Okay. Sir. Right from initiating the project, or I don't know, okay, we can sir. even ask uh, the system to do a feasibility and then initiate okay, and build a plan okay, all the okay, components sir. of the plan okay so okay. Uh, so we we already started writing the use cases and then we okay, need sir. to test it build a oh, fine tune okay. the script and all so uh, you can expect a lot from the program <laughs> great sir so can we also write this um, SOW or work plan? I mean, I yes, think yes. Okay. Yeah, it's a, in fact, uh, we are th even thinking of taking it as a consulting practice. So we okay. go and uh, sit with uh, the customer, understand the organizations, the business processes, and then uh, uh, build, craft these uh, scripts, teach them how to interact, and then uh, handhold them. So that is another thing as part of our professional services we are thinking. Yes, sir, because I think this will greatly reduce the effort uh, spent on uh, preparing mm -hmm. them and the project manager can focus on other tasks, you know, which are uh, going to help them, you know, make things faster. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. I think there is a question. Uh, let me read it. Uh, OK. Project manager is not just uh, there to create plans, but main role is uh, to ensure. Sir. Yeah, ah. that was for that was uh, Mr. Nagaraj's response for Farzana's question. Her question is oh, about okay, that. Okay, okay, okay. All right. I think uh, I, I mean I like this question and the answer. Uh, what uh, my response to it is uh, uh, basically some of these system oriented activities uh, and uh, understanding different uh, uh, views from stakeholders. Uh, if an assistant perform this, the project manager can effectively use the time related to people skills, relating, building, fostering relationship. I don't think uh, any uh, chat GPT can really okay, work heart to heart. Okay, so that is more important for project success. So project manager can basically spend a lot of time with people, understanding, aligning, uh, serving to their expectations. Uh, I thought uh, that is something is a takeaway from what she asked and what uh, he answered. Absolutely, yeah. sir. Agreed with you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Good. Thanks a lot. Uh, I think uh, we are about to close. So please. Uh, uh, um, put your feedback. We'll keep the session open, but those who have completed, uh, so you can log off. All the best. Uh, keep in touch with us. Uh, we will come with uh, time to time different topics uh, in the form of these uh, uh, webinars. Uh, thank you uh, for this uh, overwhelming response uh, support that you have extended to it. Uh, uh, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. We'll be in touch. Yes.
Yeah. Sir, and uh, the PDU certificate will be sent to your uh, mail ID, which you have mentioned uh, in the feedback form. So please submit your feedback and uh, uh, next week by uh, Tuesday or Wednesday, you will receive the certificate. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining. All right. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Thank you all. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks for the wonderful uh, session. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining. Bye now. Thank you.